Welcome to the latest bootloader flashing video. We're going to go over why you need a bootloader, which machines require it, and how to do it. Stay tuned. If you're watching this video, you're probably here because you learned that your printer needed a bootloader. And you're probably also wondering, what is a bootloader? The bootloader is a small piece of code that basically allows you to update the printer board firmware with your USB cable. By default, most of these manufacturers, for some reason, aren't shipping the boards with a bootloader pre-installed. So if you want to update your firmware to gain new features or add on products such as like our Easy ABL or our filament sensor kit, you're going to need to flash your bootloader. Now, once the bootloader's flash on the board, you only need to do it once unless you somehow get a bad flash. And by a bad flash, I mean, let's say you're flashing and your power goes out or your computer crashes. Typically, this can leave the board in a state where it will not boot up and it also will not take another piece of firmware, which in that case, you would just reflash the bootloader and start over again. That's one of the reasons I recommend you guys keep an Uno on hand in case you ever have to bail yourself out from a bad flash. Now, in terms of a bad flash, this is also recommended to keep one on hand, even if you have a board that comes with a bootloader like your 2560 base board. Now, this video I'm going to format in a way so that it's not outdated as we get new printers. I'm gonna show off a bunch of different style boards that we have here on hand. The general idea is that if your printer has a 1284p chip, you're gonna need a bootloader on the printer. The difference between the 1284p chip and the 2560 is basically how many pinouts it has. Aside from that, there's not a huge difference. There are program space differences in terms of how much code you can fit on there. But for the most part, the 1284p will do what you need it to do. And you're not going to get better print quality from a 2560 or 1284p. In order to flash your bootloader, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a piece of hardware. You're going to need an Arduino Uno with some jumper cables, which we sell in our store. You can get any Arduino Uno. So if you have one lying around, you can use that as well. Typically, the ones that are not the official official Arduino Uno actually worked the best. We've had some problems using the genuine ones for some reason, and we just use the third party ones that we sell as they work more consistently, it seems. But that could just be our luck. You also need your printer, obviously, that needs a bootloader. If you're not sure if your printer needs a bootloader, you can always contact us if you're one of our customers or thinking about becoming a customer, and we'll let you know if that machine needs it. You can also just look at the board. Here are the two different chips. On the left side, we have the 1284P, and the right side, we have the 2560. So basically just look at your board and see which chip you have on it. There should be one largish chip in the center of the board. And if yours has a 1284P, it probably needs a bootloader. In addition to the hardware, you will also need the Arduino IDE with the Sanguino library pre-installed. Luckily for you guys, if you're on a Windows machine or a Mac, we have that included in the unified firmware download. If you download our version and use that, it's all pre-set up for you and you don't have to do anything but use it. Let's get into the different boards and then we're gonna show you how to flash your bootloader and then we will head you over to the firmware setup guide to flash your firmware. So sitting here in front of us, we have a bunch of different boards and some of them may look familiar to you, some of them may not. In the top left corner here, we have our traditional ANET style board. And this one is a little different in that it doesn't actually have a dedicated ICSP header, which is the programming header we're gonna use. Instead, if you look here on this J3 header, there is actually the programming pins on the center six pins. If you look at the diagram here on screen, you'll see the pinouts to flash through those pin headers. Moving on here, we've actually got three different Creality boards here. You can ignore the fact that some of these are missing parts as these are harvested for replacement parts and for testing. This board is from the Ender 2. If you look very closely, you'll see the Ender 2 and the CR10 boards look very, very similar. They're the same exact setup process and the programming headers are in the same spot. So we're going to move this one aside and we have our V112 Creality board here, which you can see. And this is the same process as the V113. It's actually the same process for every single one of these boards. The thing that differs is where this header is located. So if you look on your Creality style board, whether that's the Ender 2, Ender 3, CR10, the 1284P boards, whether it's the V112, V113, or your classic one like this guy, they're all the same programming sequence. You're going to use this header here to program these style boards. Now on this board here, if you notice, we have a jumper 
on here. And if you look very closely, you'll see it says VREG and USB. And what that does is determines where the CPU is getting its 5 volt power from. So if you have a board with a jumper that says VREG USB, you're gonna wanna move it over to the USB position. So you literally just take the little jumper off and you can see in this board, USB is over to my left here, but you wanna put the jumper on there. If you don't, the board will not get power and you can't flash the bootloader. The WANHAO boards, which are these, this is from a WANHAO i3. This also has a jumper right here and you can see I already have it set to USB, but if it's on VREG, which is in this position here, then you're gonna to wanna to set it over to USB. Just remember when you're flashing, if your board has a jumper, to set it back to VREG. Otherwise, when you plug your printer in, it's not going to power up the screen. You're gonna to have to reopen your machine and move that jumper back. As a little bonus here, we also have a Tronxy brand Melzi board. And this one does have a VREG USB jumper as well. Now we do not have the red board that looks very similar to this ANET board from Tronxy but that one is going to be applicable in terms of flashing this. The only board out of these 1284s that are different in terms of flashing is the ANET, and instead of selecting the Sanguino CPU in the Arduino IDE, once we get to that spot, you're going to select the ANET V1.0. It's because these boards are set up slightly different, even though they use the same chip, the fuse bits and everything inside these chips are set differently from the factory versus all these other 1284P boards, but the process is exactly the same regardless. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to use the CR10 board. This is the original CR10 board, and you can tell it's the original by the fact that it's black. These also came in green, but it has the jumper. Because this printer board has the jumper, I'm gonna make sure it's on USB. And like I said, if it's on VREG, you're gonna move it to USB before we start this process. If you don't, then the board CPU will not get power. Now, if you buy a kit from us, you're gonna get a pack of 10 female to female jumper wires like these okay the female to females are the ones with the holes on the other end and then you're also going to get a pack of five of the female to male and you can tell the female to males because they have the male pin on one end now these you can literally just pull apart so if you just do this you can pull them apart so they're easier to work with you're gonna need five female to females and one male to female now in terms of connecting the boards I will display pictures of the programming header pinouts. If you're doing a Creality board, if you have the Uno lined up like this and the Creality board lined up like this, we're going to connect from this header on the Uno here, this header here, to the programming header on the board. And your programming headers are going to be six pins. So if you have a 1284P board that isn't covered in here, just look for the six pin programming header and look for the pinout of it, but usually they're always going to be the same pinout. So meaning, if you look at this board, it actually has these labeled. This is the programming header for the Tronxy Melzi board, and they're actually labeled here. So now to connect these pins, we have six wires to connect. And going down from here, and there's actually a pinout on our website product page for the Unos. But basically, starting with this first row of headers moving down, is your five volts, your MOSI, your ground, and then on the next rows from top to bottom, in my orientation anyways, we have MISO, SCK, and reset. And we're gonna connect everything but the reset from this header to this header. And on the CR10 boards, what we're gonna have is the same pinout here. So five volt, MOSI, ground, and then MISO, SCK, and reset. So we're gonna just start by cross connecting these and the colors of the wires do not matter. What matters is the order. So I'm gonna connect, I'm connecting the five volt right now, one to one across, and we're gonna do that for the rest of the headers. Now the last 
header we need to connect is the reset pin. So if you notice here, there's a pin still not connected and this reset pin on your board, your printer board, is gonna go to pin 10 on your Arduino Uno, which is why we need the male to female. So I'm connecting the reset pin here over to pin 10 on the Arduino board. And if you look on the Arduino board, they're all labeled on here. And in this case, pin 10 is right here. It's gonna be on the digital pins here. So if you're looking at where this header's separate, it's three over. And now we're cross-connected. So at this point, what we're gonna do is plug in our Uno. We're not connecting the board's USB. We're gonna connect the Uno's USB to our computer. And if everything's connected correctly, you should see lights start flashing on your printer board because it's gonna get power from the Uno over the jumper wires. We're now going to connect the USB from our computer to our Uno. And if you have a brand new Uno, when you plug this in, you should see some lights start flashing. And then the L light, once it stops rapidly blinking, will pulse slowly, just like this. If your Uno is blinking like this, that means it is working and it's ready to accept the sketch to turn it into a programmer, which we're gonna go to now. If you have everything cross-connected correctly, the blue LED or some other LED, depending on your board, the ANETs have a red one, the Tronxies, I believe, have a green one, but you wanna make sure that you have an LED on. And if you have your LCD connected to it, your LCD will also light up as the board is now receiving power over the jumper wires from the Uno's five volt USB connection. What you need to do now is head over to our website and get the unified firmware package, which contains the Arduino IDE and our firmware. So if you go to firmware.th3dstudio.com, you will get a page here and you just wanna click this full package download and then let this file download. Now that we've downloaded and extracted all the files from the zip file, you will have all these files here. What you're going to want to do is double click the open firmware windows and what's gonna happen is it's going to load the Arduino IDE. Now that we have the Arduino IDE open, it's gonna open into our firmware by default. To program our Uno, to turn it into a programmer, we're going to go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP, Arduino ISP. All you need to do to upload this to your board is make sure you have Arduino Uno selected for the board. Select the COM port your board is on. In our case, it's COM4. If you notice, my computer has an extra COM port here because of an Intel management controller. You wanna make sure that you select the correct COM port or it's not gonna work. If you're not sure which COM port is your Uno, what I recommend is disconnecting it, see what ports are left, and then reconnect it and see which one shows up. That'll let you know which port the board you just plugged into, whether it's the Uno or the printer board you need to connect to. So I'm going ahead and click COM4. This will be different from yours. And then all you need to do is hit upload. And you're going to see it'll say down in the corner, compiling sketch, and it should take a couple of seconds. And now it's uploading to the board. And we're done now. Now our Arduino Uno is programmed to act as an Arduino programmer. We can go ahead and close this out and go back to our firmware here. Now to actually burn the bootloader, you're gonna to wanna to have to check a couple of things. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the correct CPU selected. If you're using any of the 1284P boards except for the ANET, you're gonna to wanna to select Sanguino 1284P. If you have an ANET board, you're gonna to wanna to select ANET V1.0. So I'm gonna go ahead and select Sanguino 1284P. And you wanna make sure the programmer is Arduino as ISP. Now we've slimmed down the programmer option. If you downloaded the regular Arduino IDE, there's gonna be a ton of them, including one that's labeled Arduino ISP, as well as Arduino as ISP. We want to use a one that's labeled Arduino as ISP. So make sure that's selected. And all you need to do then to burn the bootloader is go to tools, burn bootloader. And you'll see down here that it literally takes a second. This is in real time, I'm not speeding this up. This is just to show you what it looks like when we're burning the bootloader. You'll see the LEDs start to flash rapidly and it will literally take about five to 10 seconds to flash. And now our board has a bootloader on it. At this point, we are done with the Arduino Uno and we can now disconnect it from our computer and from our printer board. Now go ahead and disconnect your Uno from your computer and disconnect the jumper wires from your printer board. At this point, your board now has the bootloader on it 
and you are able to upload firmware. Now, once you have the bootloader on your board, you're gonna notice that your LCD is either going to be completely blank or locked up if there was something displayed when you started. This is completely normal, and that means that the bootloader is on the board, and once you flash the bootloader, it wipes out the firmware. Now, in the past, we've covered going over loading the firmware with our unified firmware in the same video as a bootloader, but in order to make these video tutorials more modular, and so that way if we update something, I'm going to split them up into different chunks. So at this point, you can go ahead and click the little card that pops up or the link down in the description to see how to use our firmware. It's very simple and it might seem a little intimidating, but basically the process is connect the Uno with the jumper wires to your 1284p board, Upload the Arduino ISP sketch to your Uno so it can act as a programmer. Burn your bootloader, disconnect the Uno from your computer and the printer board, and then flash the firmware. So head over to the unified firmware flashing video to see how to configure our firmware for your printer board. If you're using standard Marlin, you can then go ahead and flash your standard Marlin. But this covers going over the bootloader. I hope this has been very helpful to you guys. And hopefully you'll be able to get a little more performance out of your printer by running a firmware that's safer and has more features. Thank you for watching and happy printing.